Well, hello. <laughs> and welcome to Dundonald Parish Church. It's good to have you all with us today. And whether you're here in person or you're tuning in online later, you are all warmly welcome. For those of you in the sanctuary today, that's your first time back. It's great to have you. It's a special moment coming back into the church again, isn't it? So we really hope that you are blessed by the worship today. We're going to say Happy Father's Day because it's Father's Day today. So we say Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, but also to all the grandpas and the uncles and the cousins and all the men that play a positive role model to our children. We hope you have a blessed day. And today we are back looking at the book of Philippians. And the theme of today's service is cultivating the peace of God and how prayer is the bridge between panic and peace. So I hope the theme of the service today will give you comfort. Our book club is continuing. We have been studying the Paul's letter to the Philippians using a book called A Life Worth Living by Nikki Gumbel. We're coming to the end of our book club. It will be the, the last meeting before the summer. And then after the summer, we are going to launch Alpha, which is an introductory course to Christianity, which is really engaging and fun. So after the summer, if you're keen to be involved in Alpha, that will be wonderful. Now, for those of you that were not in church last week, you will notice we have a new banner over here. Now, this is a banner that represents church and community through COVID times. You'll know the church was busy during the COVID year. We did an awful lot to engage with our community and make sure people felt that they were valued and supported. And if you look closely at the banner, it just symbolizes everything we did. The bags of joy, the bags of fun, the bags of sparkle, the artwork on the railings, um, everything that we did, all the online stuff that took off. We started recording our services and putting them online for the first time. So have a wee look at that banner when you can. I think we're going to send a, a good news story to life and work because I think for two months worth of work, is that right, Francis, two months? that was achieved by a very small team. So we're going to tell life and work about it. And we're also going to maybe tell the Ayrshire Post because I think it's quite spectacular. If you're here today, can you spread the word that church is a safe space to be? We are complying fully with the government and church restrictions. If you're feeling comfortable in cafes and restaurants, you are more than safe in this environment here. And it's just a reminder that God is present here with us and longs to be with each and every one of us. But if you can spread the word that church is open and spread the word that church is safe. When you're, you've been seated in an allocated seat, at the end of the service, you'll be ushered out when you've to, to leave your seat. So it's all done in a very safe way. Just to let you know also that we don't have our children in church, which is a bit sad today because it's Father's Day and they would normally be doing something fun. But they are having a lot of uh, fun up at the castle and visitor centre. They meet up there at 10.45. And we've had to recruit a bigger team for Kirsty because the Sunday club is growing quite rapidly. I got 15 new children, 15 new children this week who want to join in the outdoor learning. So we just ask for your prayers for Kirsty and her team because they do such a good job. And also we remember Ruth who takes the teenagers on a faith walk on a Sunday as well. Now, have you noticed the new display outside the church when you came in? This is our latest art installation. Um, the artwork is done again by the children of Dundonald Primary School. Myself and Tony for two weeks took each class out in turn, took them into the woods, into a safe space, and we taught them about the Good Samaritan, and they then had to reenact the Good Samaritan, and we were dancing, and it was, it was a lot of fun. But then we started thinking about, well, who were the Good Samaritans to us in the COVID year? And how could we be Good Samaritans to each other? So that display symbolizes the Good Samaritan. But what we're looking for is personal stories of Good Samaritans in your life. Maybe not Good Samaritans just now, maybe a Good Samaritan that helped you many, many years ago. So we want to gather Good Samaritan stories and they're going to go up on the railing so that when people pass, they've got these wonderful stories of goodness and kindness and care. So if you've got a Good Samaritan story, it doesn't matter if it's not a recent one, send it to me because we would love to use it. 
Uh, the other bit of news, I've got a lot of news and notices. I hope you're still with me. Are you okay? You're with me? <laughs> you know the food bank was delayed in opening in March 2020 because of COVID. South Ayrshire Food Bank couldn't support the opening of Dundonald Branch because they were just inundated with having to respond to the crisis. But we're at the point now that the food bank will open. We've moved venues from the church hall to the Montgomery Hall just because it's easier to comply with COVID regulations because we've got an in and an outdoor. So maybe in the next fortnight on a Monday morning, the food bank will be opening from the Montgomery Hall and I have a, a lovely team of volunteers that will be trained to, to do that. And I think finally, we have some birthdays. We have a very special birthday, Maria. I wonder if we can do something about that. We have a, a 90th birthday and that is Jim Ritchie and he's here today. Jim, give us a wave. Do you know, I'm, I'm forgetting it's COVID times. I was thinking we could sing happy birthday. We cannot sing happy birthday. <laughs> I will get into deep trouble if anyone sings today. So please don't sing happy birthday. But think, thank, uh, nice thoughts to Jim. Uh, not only is his birthday, it's Father's Day, and he's got a, a nice uh, day planned with his family. So it's great to have Jim with us today. And we, can I ask that we um, send all our love and uh, prayers to Pam Kavana, uh, who will celebrate her birthday on Thursday. Anyone else having a birthday this week? No? Oh well. Let's have a, a call to worship now. Come and worship. Be still and aware of God's presence within and around you. Come and worship. Be still and aware of Jesus' presence within and around you. Come and worship. Be still and aware of the Spirit's presence within and around you. Hear his word. Be still and know that I am God. We're going to listen now as Stephen sings with us, for us, with Maria. He's singing a song called Every New Morning to the, the tune of Morning Has Broken. Just before Maria and Stephen lead us in worship, a few people have asked why we haven't got the words for you, the lyrics, so you can, you can follow the hymns. It's just for a health and safety reason, ha not having pieces of paper, but also eventually we will be using technology so that the lyrics will be up on the screen or a monitor, and we haven't, we haven't got that yet. So hopefully Stephen is singing nice and clearly that you can hear the words. If you're worshipping online, of course the words will appear on the screen and you can sing. Let's now come and pray together. Almighty God, you are an all-knowing, all-powerful God, 
From you there is nowhere to hide. You see into our hearts and know all our intimate desires, and from you no secrets can be hidden. And yet in our human frailty, you still love us. You know each of us by name, and you long to be in close communion with us all. Nothing delights you more than we, when we, at your children, turn back to you. So God, we come before you, knowing that you alone are worthy of our worship. And we rejoice to be as one in your great human family on earth as in heaven, invited by you into your holy presence to worship and adore you as a people of God. We draw near to you, understanding God. Help us not to covet yesterday, but to dream of a new tomorrow, so that all might be welcome in your community of faith, so that the whole world may know your love and your unsurpassable peace. We look upon you, tender God, the God who keeps loving us despite our failures. We bow our hearts and minds in humility, trusting in your forgiveness, leaning on your promise of welcome. We need you, loving God, now more than ever. Lover of all, we come to you, conscious of our need of you and one another, with a wish to play our part in your mission and yet recognizing our own frailties. We ask that by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through our Lord Jesus Christ. And here is now as we unite our voices in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite Elaine McClure to come up now, and she's going to share the reading for us today from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive from my work. Words of encouragement. Now I appeal to Yodia and Sintichi. Please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me to tell others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of the co-workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. May God bless this reading from his holy word. Lord have mercy. 
Christ have mercy on us now For your name is great, your heart is grace Carry liaison over all you reign You alone can save Carry liaison Lord have mercy, oh, oh Christ have mercy on us now Who is this God who pardons all our sin So ready to forgive You delight to show your mercy Who is this God who pardons all our sin So ready to forgive You delight to show your mercy Who is this God who pardons all our sin So ready to forgive You delight to show your mercy Who is this God who pardons all our sin So ready to forgive You delight to show your mercy For your name is great, your heart is grace Kyrilism, over all you reign, you alone can save. Kyrilism, for your name is great, your heart is grace. Kyrilism, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy on us now. For your name is great, and your heart is grace. Kyrilism, over all you reign, you alone can save. Kyrilism, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy on us now. Loving God, we turn to look more closely at your word now, knowing that your word is a lamp to our feet, a guide to our hearts, and the key to unlocking real and lasting peace in our life. We pray that through the Holy Spirit, you will minister into all our hearts and minds this day. Amen. Well, we heard Elaine say the words of Paul, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Well, what a beautiful piece of scripture. But do we believe it? Do we know in our head that we can talk to God about all things, but instead choose to hold worries deep within our souls? Do we listen in church about God's peace and Jesus that can guard our hearts and minds, but do nothing to cultivate that peace? If we are being truthful, quite often we are good at holding on to worry and, ba and bad at cultivating the peace of God. But today we are looking at how prayer is the bridge between panic and peace. I've maybe shared this quote before, but Sir Winston Churchill said, when I look back on all these worries, I remember the story of the old man who said on his deathbed that he had a lot of trouble in his life, most of which never happened. Worry can wreck our lives. It can rob our hearts of moments of joy. Worry can blind us from the everyday blessings that each day can bring. And I'm sure we all have experience of letting a worry multiply in our minds, to grow arms and legs until we are crippled with an anxiety that overwhelms our thinking, negatively impacts our relationships, and limits our everyday functioning. 
Well, Max Lucado, the Christian writer, writes this. We have financial, medical, educational, and spiritual advances that previous generations never imagined. And we have more counselors and psychiatrists seeing more patients and writing more tranquilizer prescriptions than at any other time in the history of the world. Why do so many people and so many Christians lack real peace of mind? And Nicky Gumbel, in our book that we're reading, wrote something similar. He said he saw a sign outside a church which read, Why pray when you can worry and take tranquilizers? <laughs> we contrast that with what the Apostle Paul has just told us. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then, he will ex then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. We can cultivate the peace of Jesus, which is the antidote to worry by coming close to God in prayer. Or as God has just sung, come to Jesus. Paul urges us to pray in every situation, in everything. We pray when things are going well. We pray when things are difficult. We pray when we are lost. And we, are, we pray when we don't know which way to go. And the more we pray, the more the peace of Jesus will flow. The more we pray, the less anxious we will be. And this is a promised promise from God, a wonderful and extraordinary promise that as we pray, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And it's true. I've given God the worries of myself and the anxieties of other people in prayer, and he has exchanged them for his peace. And this peace can fall in a very physical way. Pulses can settle, racing hearts can calm, breathing can become steady, and anxious thoughts can fade away. And please do have conversations with other Christians about examples of this supernatural peace that they've experienced in their life, because everybody, everybody that knows Jesus will have a story to share about this peace. Well, the word peace here means wholeness, soundness, well-being, a oneness with God, a peace which transcends all understanding, is one that surpasses all our hopes and our expectations. It transcends the understanding of others in that they cannot understand how we can be so peaceful when coming through major worries and anxieties. In fact, there are times in the storms of life when I've been surprised myself at the peace that I'm experiencing despite everything. This is the peace of Jesus. And the peace of Jesus does so much more. The peace of Jesus protects us and keeps us close to God. It stops us from walking away from our faith when times are tough. It stops us from thinking we can handle our problems on our own, away from worship and our family of faith. But this is what Christians are prone to do. When times are hard, when times are tough, when times are painful, they go underground. They avoid others. They stop praying to God. They bypass the peace which God is freely offering. They fail to understand that the peace of God through Jesus protects us from the attacks of the evil one, which leads us away from God. Augustine, one of the great early Christian fathers, wrote this. Christ dwells in us by faith. Pre present faith is Christ present. Waking faith is Christ awake. Slumbering faith is Christ asleep. When faith awakes, Christ begins to speak. And how true this is. To be able to hear Jesus speak, we need to keep our faith alive. In order to know the peace of Jesus, we need to keep 
our faith alive. And when our faith is alive, we can sense his powerful presence with us through the hard times and the good. And we will pray. And peace, that peace that that can pass all human understanding, logic, and reason is the outcome of our relationship with Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Listen again to the scripture reading and just let it really wash over you. This is truth. This is God's promise to us. Don't worry about anything. But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. And the words of Jesus himself, peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. In times of panic, When anxiety or fear threatens to overwhelm us, we just need to be reminded that peace is a ruling power in our life because we know Jesus and he lives in us through his spirit. Jesus gave us himself when he went to the cross for us. He is our constant. He is our ruling power. He is our peace despite our circumstances. He is the Lord over everything. We can abide in peace when we abide with Jesus. We can overcome all fear, darkness, and worry because we know the peace of Christ which passes all human understanding. Let us pray. Gracious God, when the storm rages and life is in turmoil, when the wind blows and the waves threaten to engulf us, Grant that even then our souls will be at peace, secure in the constancy of your love. Lord Jesus Christ, when we find ourselves overwhelmed by life's problems and struggling to stay afloat, be there to still the storm and to grant your peace, a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Stephen is now going to sing a beautiful blessing of peace over you all now. If you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling worried, if you're feeling afraid, let this blessing wash over you now. May the Lord bless you. if the offering could be brought down if possible.
Thank you, Graham. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this offering. Please use it and our time, talents, resources, and gifting for your praise, glory, and mission. For we are yours and yours alone. Amen. I'm now going to invite Jane Ritchie, who's going to lead us in our prayers for others and our world. God, our Father, as we gather once again in our church building, we remember those members of our church family who are joining us and worshiping from home, perhaps not feeling quite ready to worship in person or simply distanced by geography. Some of them here in Dundonald, some many miles away. Keep us united, Lord, in our shared love and devotion to you. Let us also give thanks for those skilled in technology within our church who give so generously of their time and enable us to remain united as a church whilst physically distanced. We ask for your blessing on all the faithful members of our church who serve so humbly and selflessly, far too many to mention individually, but known to us all in heart and mind, as they are known to you, Lord. They are greatly appreciated for their dedication. We focus our prayers today in particular on our Outdoor Sunday Club, which is allowing our children to explore and learn about faith whilst having fun in nature. We give grateful thanks to Kirsty and all the Sunday Club leaders and helpers, without whom our children would be poorer in their love and knowledge of you, God, and of nature. We pray for people still coming to terms with the loss of a loved one. The past 15 months of the pandemic have been a time of loss and grief for many. Irrespective of the cause of death, grief is all conquering and the world can feel a very lonely and isolating place. May you bring them your comfort and your peace. May hope for the future slowly begin to shine brighter whilst memories from the past remain precious and never lose their shine. Hold them in your arms. Lord, as life slowly begins to rain, remain a little normality, remember those who continue to feel overwhelmed with life, all needing the peace that only Jesus can bring. People struggling with mental health issues, loss of employment, illness, and troubles only known to them. May you know their troubles and support and sustain them. We pray for the homeless, as life begins to become more challenging and difficult for them. The hotels used to house them and offer them a place of safety during the pandemic, now returning to places of leisure for those seeking a holiday. Be beside them and those who attempt to support and guide them. Give them daily strength to once again embrace and endure change and uncertainty. We pray for our world, Lord, a world that continues to be ravaged by the tragedy of COVID. Remote areas such as Nepal, still recovering from the devastating earthquake of 2015 and now decimated by the COVID pandemic, with no local hospitals adequate for treatment nearby and no access to transport. As the vaccination program continues to be accelerated in the UK and other Western countries, we pray for it to become more available and accessible globally, for it to reach those third world countries who are in such desperate need. They too are your children, Lord. Give them your protection and comfort and enable them to trust in you and a better and healthier future. Walk beside them and let them feel your presence. All these prayers we offer to you, God. In a world that often lets us down and leaves us feeling forgotten, you will never desert us. Our God, whose, great, whose greatness lacks nothing but contains all things, we give you thanks and raise you up. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Jane, for such a, a beautiful prayer. I have to also thank the wonderful team that were formed in a lockdown. We've got a team of about 15 to 20 people that write the prayers of intercession every week. And I have been so blessed by hearing so many different voices, but also the prayers of other people. So we thank Jane and the other people that now share their prayers freely in church with us.
and the peace of God, which is beyond all human understanding, guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> 